Hi everyone, today we're going to learn how to create a virtual environment. Uh, before we try to learn to create a virtual environment, first of all, we need to know why it's important to create a virtual environment. A virtual environment is needed because when we developers, when we develop an application or we're working on a project, every project or application is different from another and every application's requirement is different. It needs different kind of libraries to be installed, different packages, different frameworks, different dependencies. So to ensure that every project or application stays separated from the other one, we make use of virtual environments. On top of that, you guys have been working on Google Collab. It is sort of a virtual environment. And uh, to ensure that our projects are not taking up space in our local machine, the machines that we're working on, like our computers or laptops. So when we create a virtual environment and we are installing, like we do pip install something, and those packages are quite lengthy. It can take up a lot of space. So to avoid that thing as well, for these two reasons, virtual environments are ideal to work with. If you're not working with Colab, you can't work with um, these virtual environments, create these virtual environments in your IDEs like VS Code. So we're gonna learn it today. So the first thing we're gonna do, the very first thing, the very, step we're, uh, very first step we're gonna do is, we're going to create a folder. This folder you can create anywhere, like in your C drive or D drive. Once you create a folder, uh, you're gonna go to new and create a folder. You can name this folder anything. For example, I'm gonna call it virtual world, okay? So once you are here, well, like once the first step is done, you're going to right click and come to this um, option, show more options. And you're going to open this folder in your VS Code or any IDE you're using. And I'm using uh, Windows, so I'm gonna give you the instructions according to the Windows system. And uh, I'm not gonna even add any commands for Mac because I'm not very familiar with that. So here we are. You can see that we are now in our folder. So we're going to work here. So that was our second step. The third thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click and go to the terminal. This is where the real magic is gonna happen, okay? So once we're here, we're going to, in order to create our virtual environment, it's not very difficult. It's not very difficult once you understand how it is, how it works, how to do it, it becomes very easy. Okay, so here we are. We're going to write Python dash M V E N V. This, this is something that you have to just write it as it is. Python dash M V E N V. Now after space, you can give any name to your folder that you be creating, uh, that you be, this name is actually going to be used for your virtual environment. You can identify your virtual environment with that name. Okay, so just make sure that you're choosing a name which is something that is easy or you can tell what it is. So I'm going to say it, my underscore environment, E and V, okay? So unlike our um, our computers or laptops, like all we do is that we open it, click, click, click. The terminal is a bit like a different kind of, a different sort of a world to work in. So here, this thing happened with this line, this thing happened, you see? It has created a folder for us and then now the virtual environment has been created. We can see the folder has been created, but we need to activate it as well. 
And then we got to get inside that as well. So for that, we're just going to write the name of our virtual environment. And then we're going to press backslash. So if you come to your folder created here, it's not just that folder. If you press it, like if you click it, it is going to show you include and it's going to show you a library where you can see the pip is already installed. Pip 24.0 is also installed and scripts. You can see that. So here you can see scripts has activate or activate.bat. You can use any of these activate or activate.bat. Okay. So here we are scripts, scripts, backslash activate. All right, so here we are. We're going to press it and you can see. Oh, where did we go? So we're going to just, yeah. Uh, clear the clutter here. Okay, so here we are. Our virtual environment has been created. Voila. So the next thing that we got to do is start working. Mostly what happens when you're working on a project, you're working with three files, like mostly, um, at least three files. One is your main file where you're going to write your code. And I don't know where the camera is and where I'm looking. So the main file is where you're going to write your main code and then you're going to have a requirements file where you're going to write the names of all the packages or libraries or frameworks that you will be installing. So how we're going to do that? Let's make the requirements file. So what I'm going to do is that pip install, oh, sorry, pip freeze and larger than or greater than signed, sign requirements.txt. So what we're doing is that we're just creating a requirements file, which is in .txt. Here's the code for that. It's an important code. You can write it and then you press enter. So here you see a new file. Wow, in it magic. So let me tell you, I wrote the names of some, some packages uh, for practice. So I'm going to write them here, request request or we're going to say pandas numpy you guys are familiar with matplotlib okay and python dot env this is also a package this package is important because when we're going to be accessing our api keys uh, as i was telling you that the one file is for the main code the second file is for the requirements and the third file is going to be where you're going to put all of your API keys. Sometimes you're not just working with one API key, you're working with a lot of API keys. So, um, because we're, we're, we're um, learning artificial intelligence, so just added one package from generative AI. Here we go. So these are the names of all the packages that I wanted to install. This is in the requirements file. I come here and I say that I want to create another file that is going to be .env. That is going to come with a little bit of, um, this icon is like a labyrinth, a maze. So here we are. So what we do is that Google API key and here we're going to give the API key in the string. So we're going to pick that up from here. So I picked it up from here and I'm going to paste it here. So uh, make sure that you are saving everything. So I saved everything here. Now, first I asked it, I gave the command to um, create a file, requirement file. Now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to ask you to install everything that's there. Pip install dash r requirements.txt. Okay. 
requirements.txt. All right, so what it's going to do now, it's going to take a little bit, little bit of your time. What it's going to do is it is going to install everything that's written here. So the advantage is instead of me going every time, putting in pip install this, pip install that, I'm going, I'm going to write the names of all the packages in my requirements file, and then I'm going to give it just one command, and it's going to be installing everything. I'm a lot of yellow code. What? what? Oh, my internet is not connected. All right, so I need to do it again. Pip install. No. Requirements.txt. Requirements.txt. I'm hopeful. Yeah, it's going to run. It's going to run now. All right. So here we are. So like other things, we're going to have our main file. This is our main file that we created here. So like any good developer, we got at least three main files to work with. This is a file where we're going to write our code. This is the file where we're going to keep our secrets. This is the file where we're going to keep all our dependencies, like all these dependent people are here. So the so next very important thing that we got to do is that we got to make sure that everyone is connected. All three files are connected. All three environments are connected to each other in the virtual environment, OK? So none of these things are on your computer, right? On our computer. Well, they are in like virtual environment, fancy word. OK. So to ensure that we're able to access our API key that we put in our .env, oh, is it working? I think I'm probably it's downloading something. OK, we're going to write import OS. And from .env, we would ask them to import load underscore dot env. This way we'll be able to do that. We're going to call it now. So this is it. We're going to have our variable API key. Now this variable, we can choose any variable of our choice. That's perfectly fine. OS died. Uh, this is get uh, env and here we're going to pass our our variable google api key okay we're going to pass it but oops no, 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 brother this is not what we wanted uh, here we are so we're going to paste it here google api key the variable where we put our API key. So the the thing with a .env file is that we never push it on GitHub. It's something that we have. And if someone else needs to run our code, they would have to use their own API key to run that code. All they have to do is to give the right variables. So here we are. So we got to make sure we give our variables without strings, like without quotation marks, but here we have to pass it in quotation marks. So in order to, to check if our um, Google API key has been accessed, we're going to write our um, variable. Then we're going to say, basically we're saying if it's, it's running, write successful. And if it's not running, else, it's got to say, oh my god, all right? So here we are. OK, we are here. Mm, I got to come down. A new version of PIP is available to update on this. Notice. OK, I don't, I don't know if we got to do it right now or not. All right, so here we are. So it shows the little white dot. We need to save it. 
and this one is saved and this one is saved. Now how we know this requirements is also connected to our main file, my code file. You see python dash dot env. We are using it here dot env to access our API key. So if it's working, we got to see if it's working. Okay. So we're going to say python my underscore code dot py and it says successful it means not only our dot env file has been accessed by the main file but also the requirements file all these requirements have already been installed that's the reason in this code when we run this just ignore these squigglies i i don't know where they come from just try to confuse me all right so here we are so here's a short tutorial. I hope you guys like it. And this is the basic, 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 basic building block of you working in VS Code. And, uh, you know, now all you have to do is to write your code, any kind of code here, you know, put in as many API keys you want here and as many dependencies or packages and frameworks, anything that you want here, and just run it. You're good to go. Thank you very much for listening to me and you guys have a great day. I'm sorry, it's my first video. That's why I don't know where to see. Uh, the camera is here and I've been looking at my, my own picture. So like I'm all over the place. My apologies for that. But thank you and have a great day.